Okay, I've got this new boat, and since I'm a hard-hitting Cheeto-fingered lube tuber now, I figured I'd better show you how I rig it up. I got a perfectly blank canvas here, huge pile of stuff from sports headquarters, and all of it's got to go on this boat. Um, got a little bit of time, the boat came nice and early this spring, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to be rushed rigging it, and I can show you how to do it right. As a rule for me when boat rigging, uh, the first thing I like to put on is the trolling motor. Um, a lot of your accessories are going to revolve around that. Uh, it's the most important piece of kit on a boat. It rivals a drain plug for priorities. Um, you're pretty much not going fishing without it unless you're a tiller operator. Um, so I like to start with it and then and go from there. So I got a Minn Kota Alltrex here. Um, and I'll kind of show you the steps. This is probably the sixth or seventh one of these I've done. And it's pretty simple, but stick around. I mean, this thing is new, new. Like plastic on the furniture, new. I like that sound. Okay, let's delve into this box here and see what we're dealing with. Not that it's going to be a surprise if done this enough. Okay, there she is. Open it upside down. Maybe, minor details. Just take your soft and put it off to the side. And we're always gonna start with the mount here. That's standard issue. Leave the rest of this here for a minute and get this mount going. Well, hopefully you can see here, I've got some pretty intricate rigging going on for a tripod, um, but yeah, I mean, I've put this trolling motor on this same boat, you know, plenty of times, so I kind of have an idea of where I want it, um, but I'll show you kind of what you're looking for here. So these parts that come in, in this bag that are attached to this mount or for the lift assist arm, uh, don't lose those, they're real important. Just put them off to the side, you don't need them yet. And then this screw is the only thing that holds the trolling motor head and shaft and the whole assembly on here. So just screw it back in there for now. Yeah, more of that peeling plastic, that new, new. To get this thing open when it's not mounted to anything, it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, you're not just gonna be able to jack on the cable like you normally can. You just put your finger under, you can see this locking mechanism, just push it forward and open this sucker up. None of this lift assist is attached yet. That's what's in that bag. So I'm just gonna open this up for now. Get that little bit of jam out of there. So a couple things here that are important to note when you're picking your install location. The most important part is that you have bow clearance here. Uh, you want this just kind of over when that head comes up you don't want it to be tonking on your nose cone there and you want enough clearance for your shaft so like i said i've done this bolt before so i kind of have an idea but you want her dangling over a little bit there oh just got a text that's all right i'm not redoing this take so i'll get it there just be mindful of where your cables are going to run on this particular boat you can see there's a hole there for my cables to run down for my graphs and everything um just ignore those texts. That's rude. So I know that's about as far as I can come this way. So I'm just going to get a tape measure, make sure it's precise along here. And just kind of look back, because um, your shaft's going to extend out there. And you want to be mindful of, of placement for pulling into docks and things like that, so you don't knock your, uh, you know, your control head off or anything. So I'm just going to do a little dry fit here and start drilling some holes in this unit. Okay, I now know why there's not a uh, boat rigging video on every YouTuber's uh, page. It's a real pain to do this. So uh, if you can, just take a second, like, share, uh, comment some stuff. Just get it rocking a little bit. Uh, help out the channel if you want. Uh, if not, uh, maybe I'll catch you next time on this. Yeah, I'm just digging into the hardware bag here. Find the bolts, and I'm just gonna take that bolt, take my drill bits, 
you probably could just read in the manual and see what size this is and what size of bit to use, but I'll just line them up here. So I found the drill bit I want to use. It is a quarter inch, so probably the most common drill bit, but over the years your kit starts to get uh, pummeled a little. Over the classic ones, it'd be like the drill bit equivalent of a 10 millimeter socket. But anyway, you don't want to drill it too big. Um, that'll just result in play, the possibility of bolt breakage. It'll just loosen off easier if it's too big. So yeah, get that spot on. And the way you'll know too is when you put it into the hole here, if it doesn't freely fit through this pre-drilled factory hole uh, in your trolling motor, then it's too big. So definitely an important thing. And before you get too much into it or any further, take this strap. This is the most common thing I've seen people forget on trolling motor installs is not putting a strap on. This is just a support strap. Um, you don't have to perfect it just yet. Just get it somewhere under there so it's ready to go. Yeah, I'm just going to take my tape measure and get everything nice and even where I want it. And this is, I'm taking my time here. Um, I want it to be right. You're only going to do this once, so. Get it right, get it pretty, get it so it's going to be the thing you're looking at all year, so. You want it right, you want it efficient. So we're installing an Altrex here. This is actually probably the hardest trolling motor to install. Not that it's difficult, um, but it's a little more difficult than like a Tarova power driver Altrex. Uh, a lot of them use this plate, like a quick release bracket or a different kind of sliding plate. And the theory is just the same. You just don't have to deal with the clunk as much. Um, so, so some of them, you just take the side plates off and the bolt holes are there and, and whatever. So this is all just kind of universal advice. Okay, so I've got a pretty good idea of where I want it. The next thing to do is just to take off your faceplate or whatever kind of setup you have and just make sure there's no obstructions down here that are going to prevent you from drilling holes, um, you know, where you want it. And that's a real common mistake and uh, it sucks. You add a bunch of extra speed holes that you don't want oftentimes or drill some through something that you shouldn't. Just going to reach down here and feel. Okay, so there's a wiring harness there. Obviously, I'm going to want to be clear of that. Wiring harness, and then the gunnel runs up here. Gunnel is four and a quarter inches wide. Not a good way to start the boat's career here, drilling through the gunnel. Okay, we're looking good there. I actually, uh, just for checking there, I actually had to change the plans a little bit. So, keep that in mind. I'm just gonna feel around here. Okay, we're clear there, we're clear there. There's a big wiring harness right here. And it's, I'm really gonna just have to use caution and it should be good and clear, but. So here's where the Ultrax is unique and there's other ways of doing this. You can mark it, you know, take it off and drill it. Uh, I just put the bit at the end of my drill and these are long bits, so you can usually get in there. You might get a little bit of rub on your inside aluminum plate um, and whatever. I'm just going to get one bolt in there and just get a baseline so it can't jump around on me too much or move too far. And these new lines, there's no wood left in these. This part used to be wood with like a sheet of aluminum. Uh, this is all, um, you know, just metal. So. Keep that in mind when picking your drill bits and, and adjust your drill speed accordingly. Okay, I got one bolt in. I'm just gonna keep going around and, until I have half a dozen holes in this thing. What's happening? Yo, making a YouTube video, I see. <laughs> yeah. And there are these pre-drilled holes in the, in the bracket. Don't be afraid to add your own. Like these ones up front, I'm not gonna be able to use because they're into the gunnel. I'll probably put one in the middle there. Um, you know, these ones will be fine, so don't be afraid to add your, add your own. So 
So they give you six bolts. Uh, I'd recommend using them all. You know, you can see I added a couple. One that wasn't a factory hole, and that wasn't a factory hole. But there's no way adding more bolts is going to hurt you. You know, back in the young days, I would just slap like three in and go fishing, and by the end of the year, she was just flopping all over the deck. And that's why it's nice to you know take your time when you're doing this and do it right. You don't have to deal with it anymore. The more you have, the less likely they are to come loose early too. Um, they're always going to loosen off no matter what you do a little bit. Um, and it's important to kind of retorque them after a little bit of use into the season. Okay, so the holes are in. I'm just going to use the provided washers and nuts and not much I can say about that. Just going to weld her down here. Uh, I know you may be thinking like, why don't you just use Loctite on these bolts when you put it on? Um, Oh, I have tried that. Loctite isn't magic. Um, you know, it, it's a good product, but it's if if it's going to rattle loose, it's just going to happen regardless. Uh, it might buy you another two weeks or three weeks before you, you start noticing, you know, that it might be coming loose. So uh, it's not a fail safe. It might give you a little bit of a false sense of security. So I just stick with the factory uh, bolts and you know, just check them after a few weeks of use. And once you tighten them back up for that second time, they're on there, you'll, you'll be pretty good for, you know, the life of the trolling motor in most cases, unless it's something exceptional or, you know, if you're really beaten on it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the answer there. I am, I'm not saying you can't use it, uh, but that's, those are my thoughts there. You know, I could grab my impactor and save a little bit of time, but these stainless threads are actually super soft. Um, you can pile up the threads, you can pile up the, or strip the heads. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So just take the extra time and hand bomb them. I've got all the tools here to send them home in a hurry, but we'll do it right. Well, I'll disregard that whole do it right thing I just said. That just takes way too long. I forgot how painful that is. I'm gonna send them with the impactor until they're right at the threads and then I'll finish the tightening with the ratchet. I don't wanna be out here all day. All right, now we're gonna to put together the lift assist arm here. It's pretty basic. Oh, where'd you go? It's just a couple sleeves, uh, like a through bolt and two little Phillips head screws with blue Loctite on them. Kind of takes a little bit of finesse here, but it's not too bad. Probably essentially useless to you, but I'm sure you can look on the manual. It's relatively simple, it just takes a little bit of finesse. And all that does is, is activate the, the lift assist. You definitely need to hook this up. Otherwise, it'll feel like an old Maxim just come smashing down on you. Again, only use your impactor to get the threads closer, not to lock them all the way in. You'll just start messing stuff up. Been there, done that. So now the lift assist is activated and just watch out like that thing's got some snap to her. So. Be aware that that is going on. Let's hang the motor. So, push that arm down, just pull this gear back, push that thing, and get it to lock in. And this is that screw from earlier. It's the Allen head screw with the washer. Put that to the side, that's pretty important. 
Okay. These things are not real light, so help always helps, obviously. Just gonna line her up. Sometimes you get it first go, sometimes you have to mess with it for a while. And she's on there. Good. This guy up here. And then take this bolt. This here. Thread her back in. Okay, that guy's good and tight. Pull this out, set it up, watch it don't pinch anything. And we're in business. It's always really tight that first time you lay it down, it feels like something's wrong with it. That's common, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, it's on, it's solid. We're in good shape here. Got just a little bit of overhang over the gunnel. Um, that's kind of more did that so I could control the cables better back here. Um, definitely you want it in line with your gunnel. You don't want it way overhang. That's a reasonable amount of clearance. I can, I can deal with that. So in the box, you'll get one of these arms. Um, they're a support arm. Just so, you know, when it gets really rough, it doesn't look like it's possible, but this bracket can come smashing down into your gunnels and, you know, wreck a lot of stuff and your insides will get all messed up in here. So they send you these, these arms, um, if you're using like a Trova or an Altrex or an Altera, whatever those things are called, um, they have kind of some ram mount systems that are good, but you definitely want some sort of support. Uh, the last thing you want to see is your trolling motor flopping all over the place when you're in big water. So they send you these arms, they're long. Um, you usually have to cut them to adjust it and they'll show you how to do that. This little mount here, will just thread right into your trolling motor. So these are spare parts. Now, depending on your boat, you can put this arm on either side. Uh, if you put it on your other side here, I might be able to get it to hit my gunnel. In my experience with these, it's, it's been better on the inside. Uh, I know some bass boats will have it down and, and resting on the gunnel, so it's just where you want it. Some people don't like the arm on this side because maybe this is where your rods end up. I, I have lots of clearance here. This deck on this thing's huge, so that's not a concern, but definitely something you want to put a little bit into thought to when you're rigging up. Because these will break rods. I've seen it lots where a guy's in panic mode in a tournament and slams down the trolling motor. and. You know, smashes his NRX in two. Anyway, I'm gonna want this. You're gonna want because your trolling motor is gonna settle in uh, as everything kind of gets worn in. It's gonna it's gonna start to sag a little bit over time. Um, so you want to be able to adjust this thing so it still locks in. So um, I'm just gonna take a look here. Sand off. Let's do ten and three eighths. 10 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to go cut this thing. Uh, funny story about cutting these poles. Uh, every year we help uh, my buddy Gussie rig up his boat. And uh, the last couple of years it's been in my garage here because uh, it hasn't really fit in his. He's got his new big garage now. So we're helping him rig his boat and he's like brutal for tools. Like guy's one hell of an angler and a hell of a guy but my god he's got no tools uh you know if you run into him maybe give him a home depot gift card or something like that or whatever uh maybe you can use some of his derby winnings to buy some tools but uh i should have known i didn't bring a grinder or or anything you know kind of cutting tool even a jigsaw or sawzall or anything and uh i ended up having to cut this i found an old hacksaw blade and a piece of t-shirt like i was shawshank redemptioning through this thing uh to get it cut for for his boat this year so um yeah just a little story a friendly little chirp to my buddy there i'm just gonna battle through the mess here and get to the chop saw pretty much accepted that anytime you're rigging a boat uh any kind of cleanliness or organization in your garage is going to be thrown out the window so No, that's
cut's not some kind of fancy aluminum blade or metal cutting blade or anything. That's just a regular chop saw with a 60 tooth wheel. Um, you can chop saw it. I know people are probably cringing when I walked up to it, but yeah, it's a thing. You don't need to use a hacksaw and a t-shirt. That's where you're gonna get your cleanest cut from. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide my little floor peg back on. I always cut it a little bit long. I might have to end up cutting it twice. Yeah, it looks like it should work. Just lift it up. Max her out. Okay, so that's locked in. And it's still too short. You want that fine line where it's touching, but your trolling motor can still lock. That's the sweet spot right there. Right there. It's touching. It's going to support it. And I'm still going to be able to lock it. If you leave it too long, then your trolling motor will just be loose and you hit a wave, it'll go flying. But with it like that, it's touching, it's supporting when it goes down and it's locked in. So pretty simple and really important part. Okay, the next step in this ordeal is wiring this thing. Um, I've got a plug here. You can get a Minn Kota one. This one came with the boat. It's a Marine Co. three prong. Marine Co. three prong. There's a bunch of different types. Uh, they don't come with the trolling motor. Uh, usually they come with the boat, uh, but uh, and oftentimes you have to buy them aftermarket too. So I'll just show you quick here. It could be intimidating to some people, but uh, it's really fairly simple. So here I've got my trolling motor wires, a red one and a black one, and that's all you should have. Black one, red two. Black one, red two. Grab my phone, write that down. Okay. Happy with that. Slap her back in. All right, so they'll come with these two little plugs that you likely won't use depending on what style of harness you have. So I've got my plug here. Those will be those big, super long screws. Okay, pulled that guy out. Just a little grommet in here to seal it a little bit. Take this, I'm gonna cut both those off. All my good cutting pliers are over at the tackle making station, so rock the old rust buckets for now. Oh yeah, they still hum. Strip back a little here. Don't need to go crazy on it. Twist them off. Or okay, so some just thread into the plug like that. Some are stab lock, some whatever. You can use that plug you had. You just put that on. There's little Allen keys in the in the head, little screws that kind of crimp it down for you. So I just put them like that. You know, see, good thing I wrote it down. I forgot the order. Black one, red two. Hopefully that's right. Black one, red two. Now this one actually says negative and positive on it, so that's helpful. Mm, didn't come with a little Allen key. Let's go over through that grommet. That was my bad. Glad I caught it. it. Sucks to get it all tightened down and have to redo that. And it happens a lot. Okay. So that's in there. In the appropriate section. Let's lock her down. It's crimping that piece of metal as I tighten. That's why I never pre-crimp it. I actually haven't read the instructions to see if you should or not. It wouldn't really make a pile of sense if you did. But this is not something you want to mess around with. Uh, I've seen lots of loose wires in here. Exposed wires will lead to corrosion. These things are never truly 100% sealed. You know, you'll take some big waves and something will get in there or if you're leaving it out in the weather here and there. So you just want to take your time and keep it as tight as you can. You don't want to be looking for the problem while you're out on the water. Okay, red two, yep. Tuck her on in. Okay, so I always give it the pull test here. You know, I've seen people be sensitive with it for it not to come out. You want to try to get it out. 
Um, if you can just get it out just going like that, then it's for sure going to come out on the water. So give it a good test. You don't want to be digging into here all the time. So that's pretty good there. Can't really get it any tighter, I don't think, but there we go. That's not going anywhere. So I'll push it back up. There's usually little tabs here you line up. Okay, so this thing is good to go. Plug that in, that's it for wiring. Um, this boat's factory rigged already for a 36 volt system. Uh, depending on your system, that's a whole other ball game, but this one's nice and handy. She's already ready to go, so don't really have to worry about that. So the next thing, uh, a lot of these trolling motors come with these uh, heading sensors too. Um, they need to be wired to 12 volt. Uh, I'm still working on on you know my, my setup for that, so I'm not gonna wire this in right now. But I usually just center it, put it somewhere like right there or wherever on the wire into 12 volts here and you know, you're good to go, so. The prop is in the box, you just slap that on here and you'll be golden. Um, that's about it for, you know, a pretty basic trolling motor install of an Ultrex. And uh, like I said, other brands or models or whatever are going to be very similar. And yeah, hopefully you learned something. Hit, uh, hit subscribe and like, uh, maybe drop me a comment. And we're going to be rigging a whole bunch of stuff in the next week here. So uh, stay tuned. I'll get a little series rocking on, on boat rigging. So. I know a lot of people are here for fishing videos and those are coming too. Take her easy.